Okay, so today um, video isn't super plotted out, but I just wanted to talk about the Traveler's Notebook. So I, a couple of weeks ago, finished my Galen Leather Notebook, and I had that going for a little under a year, and I decided I wanted to give um, this system a try. Uh, I've been using it a little over a month and a half, and I uh, just wanted to talk about uh, what I like about it. Um, I did end up ordering another one of the Galen uh, notebooks. So when I fill up with this, if I want to go back to that, I can. Um, first of all, the carry, carryability, the, the, um, how easy it is to, to lug this thing around is fantastic. Um, there's no complaints there. Um, I can pick this up every morning, get my journaling out of the way and I have no problems. Um, so far, I have just used about halfway. So I'm at the halfway point of one of the books. I started this, looks like March 9th, and it is obviously, today is the 1st of April, April Fools. So I've gone halfway through the notebook in here that's that I purchased, so I would say that about, for me, a notebook lasts anywhere from a month and a half to two months. Now, um, for some, that not, might not be the best option. Um, these notebooks cost between five to seven dollars, and if you're you, you're having to replace one every two months, can slowly add up. The Galen leather notebook lasts, I would say, a year ish, and um, that one was only. $35. So you kind of have to weigh that out. Um, I like this system. I like the simplicity. Um, the paper is not as good as the um, Toma River and the Galen Leather. I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is Midori paper. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's Midori. Um, and just on like my writing, I have noticed some ghosting. So, um, and I use a fine uh, Lamy Safari nib with just the typical dark blue Lamy ink, the cartridges. So I'm kind of interested um, why there is some ghosting, um, but it's not super bad. It doesn't, it's not something that upsets me too often. Um, the nice thing with the, the Toma River paper and the Galen leather is you can really see the fullness of the ink. So there's the light and the dark. Um, whereas with this, it's kind of just one color and for someone who really purchases inks with the intent to see the different um, colors, um, it's kind of a disc, uh, a letdown. Just just a little bit. Just my personal opinion. Super good still. I I use this every day. Right in the morning, journal my thoughts out, move on with my day, and um, I'll most likely um, finish this puppy up. And then um, from there, I will decide if it's a system I want to continue to stick with or if I want to use this for another purpose. Um, in this first book I have here, I'm also at the halfway point um, in the notebook, and I'm doing a study of the book of Matthew. So um, the, um, it's really, you can, I, I have so many different notebooks, so many different journals, so you I use mine for anything. Um, but as far as my daily carry, um, I may not to continue this depends on how often I have to switch the refills. And the refills are five to seven dollars, whereas the Galen leather is 32. Um, so there's that. And next thing, so that was kind of the impromptu version of that. Also, side note, I want to mention um, when you purchase things from Galen Leather, they include so many free things, like things that cost money on their website. So like a while back, I bought that red notebook that I've reviewed, the Cosmo Air, and they sent me this, which is awesome because it handles my Norwal, which is fantastic. They also sent me this, which is brown. And this one has my Esterbrook SD, which I just wanna say, from a customer service standpoint that when you buy something and you get all these free things with it, really drives people to come back. So 
kudos to Galen Leather. And if you want to support them, I'll put a link in the description for the notebook that I bought. Um, and I will put in, um, they give like a 10% off coupon when you buy something. I'm not going to need it. So first one to use it, it's yours. Take advantage of it. Um, that's 10% off, which for some is tax, for some is shipping. So go ahead and use that. Uh, but yeah, journaling has been fantastic. Been keeping up with that. Um, super good clearing mental blockages. So I recommend that. I've gotten a couple of the people in my life to take an interest in journaling. Um, so that is a huge uh, win. But apart from that, so the real topic of this video and something that I've been so excited to share about I have been looking at these things for a long time. And I should preface that these do run about $700 each, which is not cheap. And it is what I think is an investment um, in yourself as a writer. Um, I should also mention, I didn't buy this new. I bought this secondhand, so I was able to get quite a good discount on it which prompted me to make the decision. Under normal circumstances, a $700 machine that just types books may be a harder sell, um, which isn't to say that the product isn't worth it. Um, there has been a couple people who really like it, but are kind of on the edge as far as the price. So let's, for this video, set that aside. Imagine that you're able to find this secondhand from someone used and you want to know more about it. Um, really quickly, if you can buy things used and new, or uh, excuse me, used versus new, I think that's super awesome because uh, the person that I bought this from hadn't used it in over a year, so it was just sitting there and um, in the week that I've had it, I've been able to get some serious work done with it. But anyways, enough of me talking. So here it is. And this is a free write. So it has a little handle up here. So it lifts up from the back. This is plastic, but I'm surprised to say that this case right here is actually metal. I don't know if it's aluminum or sheet metal or what it is, but it's really tough. I won't be trying to do a drop test just because that wouldn't be a great idea. But um, yeah, this is essentially a distraction-free typewriter. Yeah. So for those of the people who watch these videos and write, and not so much only people who write books or novels, I have seen people who journal with these things, which is kind of interesting because it is a typewriter. It is a typewriter with a with a keyboard, and these keys are pretty clicky, but it also has like an e-ink screen. So this screen isn't like an LCD, it's not backlit, it's the same screen that you would find on a Kindle. So you don't have to worry about the sun's glare bleaching it out. So if you take this thing outside, you're not um you're not gonna be able or you won't have difficulty seeing what you're typing. Um, it's very basic. Um, I have made it a mission this year to spend less time on the internet and more time with um, just normal things. I think that's why I gravitate towards journaling because it's just a pen, paper, and you. There's nothing else. There's no notification. So when I found this and it did come to me through the instrument algorithm, so I'm not sure if that's scary or um amazing I don't, I don't really know but it did come to me that way i saw this about a year and a half ago i have seen so many other youtubers post about it um one of the individuals that i follow quite a bit michael jex he uh posted a video about it did a year later video and also did a video about the traveler which is a very similar to this, but it's like a clamshell. So it just opens up like a laptop. So it's for you to take um, with you when you're traveling. Whereas this is more of a desk home base 
kind of computer and they do come out with special editions they have an Ernest Hemingway out I think they had another one maybe uh, 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 F, F. Scott Fitzgerald the writer of The Great Gatsby had one so they do have things like that I think if you do NaNoWriMo you're able to get 12% off so that's always a plus but basically distraction free typewriter so that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to switch the camera angle to a more overhead view and we'll get into that. All right, so here it is. So the free write in comparison to my 13 inch Mac, ugh, 13 inch MacBook Pro is pretty identical. I think it's an inch shorter. And as far as the height, um, it's probably the same. Um, this thing weighs a bit more than this. Um, I should mention that my Mac is going strong after six years. So if you are on the fence about a Mac, I would not recommend um, anything else. But anyways, here's the free write. Um, you can tell that there is a keyboard, some toggle switches, and then the e-ink screen. Uh, and that's pretty much it. On the back side, there is a, I think it's a USB-C port right here that you charge it with. And I have been told that this thing can hold up to a month of charge. Haven't tried it yet. I am interested to try it um, just because I like the idea that I can go a long time without having to charge this so that I can really just focus on writing it. Whereas my laptop, I consistently have that plugged in because it will die. Anyways. This is just a typewriter. It has one purpose, to write. It has no other purpose, thus maybe the battery lasts longer. Can't listen to music, can't do anything. So, and give grace to me because I only ha have only had this for a couple days, so I'm not the expert um, of the free write, but I am a advocate of the free write. Let me just get the stuff out of the background. Okay, so power button right here. Press it once. You can see that the screen kind of blinks on. And then here is your work. Cool thing is, is when you turn it off, which is the same button, it will like flip through these different lock, I call them lock screens. So you'll have a couple different ones. I know some of the authors. I'm not sure who this is. Maybe Jane Austen or something. Um, Gosh, I don't even know who this is. I know one is Shakespeare, one's Ed, Edgar Allan Poe, but super cool. thought it was a nice touch. Anyways, so you turn the power on. And for writers, you have multiple things going on at once. I have multiple projects going on at once. I have my A story. So this is a book that I'm writing currently. I'm only about 2,700 words in. I should preface, this is the second draft, so it's not like I had never written the story. I'm just rewriting it another time. So I have draft or project one. If I switch here, I have project two. And if I switch here, I have project three. So essentially these are three separate folders for three separate projects. Now, according to their website, the memory storage for this device is up to a million words. Now, the average story I write is anywhere from 70 to 100,000 words. So I could write 10 stories on this before it gets filled. I think if I'm doing my math correctly, J.K. Rowling could write almost the entire Harry Potter series on this device and still have memory. So there is quite a bit of storage. And I won't be trying to test the limit because a million words would probably take me a couple, close to a decade of story telling. But it is still a cool thought. I don't know what the gigs are or any of that logistical stuff. It just says a million words and I'm going to buy it. So essentially on this dial um, is the Wi-Fi. So I have it set to off. So that means all of the Typing, all the storytelling stays on the device. If I turned it on, 
um, it would be synced to a, um, an, uh, it's called Postbox account, which allows you to back up your work in Google Docs, Dropbox, and then one other, I'm not familiar with the name, but essentially you would just turn it to on, and then there's the send button. So when you're done with it, uh, with whatever you're working with, you can send it there. If you want to send it there all the time, then go ahead. I just haven't done that. I'm not sure if it's going to continuously send a new file, so I haven't worked out that kink, or if it's just going to continue to update an existing file in that I have mine set to Google Docs, so a Google Drive account. Um, but I'll have to play with that a bit. But essentially, uh, all my work is on here, and that's it. I mean... That's pretty much the gist of it. Not like honestly, that's it. Like there's nothing else. Like, and for some, the price tag is a hard sell for what it is. They have there is other functions, so it's cool because it tells you. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Okay, so you have the reading time. So that's the time it would take someone to read what you've written. You have the words. So that's twenty seven hundred words. And then characters, which doesn't necessarily matter to me. But if you click this key down in the bottom right, which says special, click it, and then you'll see there's a clock. So if you just want a clock, and that's it, you hit that. Hit it again, and then there's a date. I haven't quite figured out what these two dials mean. Um, maybe I can look it up. It just... Someone said it was a digital clock, but it's not 2038 here. So as long as, I mean, my watch says it's definitely not 2038. So anyways, you hit the thing again and you have a timer. So if you are doing, let's switch the project. If you're doing word sprints and you need to time yourself, like typically a word sprint, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. This is fantastic. Um, whenever I take breaks at work, I typically hook it up to um, this, this sprint option because it will let me keep track of the time. And I also know I've written for 30 seconds. I've written for four minutes. I've written for two and a half hours. It will keep going. So that's a cool function. And I believe if you hit the special key one more time, it goes completely blank. So which is the distraction free. That way you don't have anything here. If you toggle it once more, it will just tell that that's my email account and then the day. That's pretty much it. I usually leave it on this function here just because I like the word count. But that's pretty much it. It's nothing crazier than that. Um, if I zoom out of here. Uh, if you wanna start a new draft, you just hit these new and new buttons and it starts a new draft. Now, it will delete everything that's on it. So obviously, if we go to draw my first project, it's still there. I select project two, it's not there. Um, so I'll have to retype what I had typed, which isn't a big deal. But uh... so the keys are very clicky. And when I say very clicky, like extra clicky, like I am used to a MacBook computer. So if I start typing, um, you see how in that I messed up a word. These keys are super sensitive. Like you don't even have to do a full press. It's pretty, um, sensitive, which uh, from other keyboards is quite a different. So I've been having to get used to this. Should also mention that when you type a sentence, um, you can only work forward. So you'll notice there is no up or down or back. There's no cursor. You can only work from this point and forward. So the gimmick is it doesn't allow you to edit. And for some writers, that's their worst enemy is they write something and then they go back and they're like, I got to change it all. 
Thus, you're sitting in chapters for weeks because you can't move forward. This won't let you do that. If you, if I wanted to change, I don't like the word like. Who likes candy and watermelon? You either don't or you love it. So if I wanted to go back, I'd have to delete all of it back to the L. And then you'd work your way forward. So for some, that's intimidating. But for me, it's awesome. Also should mention, it doesn't have spell check. So if you can't spell a word, it's not going to tell you. Which is kind of crazy that we live in a world where we rely so heavily on spell check or autocorrect. Um, so you actually have to know how to spell words. And for me, I like the challenge. There has been a couple times where I've typed a word and I'm like, is that really how you spell it? Because I'm so used to autocorrect doing it for me um, that I've had to look it up. But again... I'm training my brain to, re to to spell again, I'm training it to understand that I can't rely on technology to dictate how I'm going to write. And we're used to that on our phones with autocorrect and it tells us like what the next word could be and we can just click on the word until we find a sentence we like. This won't do that, which is, again, scary. But for me, someone who just wants to write forward and look back later, that's fine. Um, so that is essentially what the free write is. It is a typewriter in modern day. Um, with a typewriter, if you f if you messed up on a sentence, you couldn't go back. Uh, there is an option. I'll go to a longer project. On these two, there's up and down. So I can scroll up. Say I just want to make sure... I wrote something somewhere. I can scroll up. And it does tell you right here the page. So it's page 17 of 43. And that's page is just the window. So it's not an actual page, just the window of text. But then I can page down. And that's it. I should mention there has been some updates. Maybe they have installed a cursor. This is a first generation free write. And there's two or three, I believe. Um... So maybe they've changed that. If they have an update for it, I'm definitely not going to do it. I don't care to go back. I don't care to, to spend. This isn't really meant to edit. It's meant to write. I have a MacBook to edit. I have programs in there that I can use to edit. So this is in its basic form what it's meant to be used as. And that's to write and that's it. So... That's pretty much it. Um, it's kind of a, di a, a different video than you may be expecting, but I, I do want to let people know that there are other options for distraction-free writing. You know, writing in notebooks like this are fantastic. I have so many of them. I have different systems, and it's awesome. You don't have to have power. They can fit in your back pocket, but if you're looking for something bit more serious. If you're even thinking about writing a book or writing a script or poetry or even just using this to journal daily thoughts or a memoir, it's all going to be stored here. You couldn't tell a story that's long enough, that's longer than this memory. I don't imagine a million word story. Who's going to want to print that? You know, so this is really in my opinion, a device that I'm going to have for decades. As long as it stays functional and operational, I have no problem staying with it. Um, so yeah, so this is this is the video for today. This is what I wanted to talk about. The uh, free write, I think it's called um, typewriter. There's the free write traveler. And I think they have a third one that's coming up. That's a more basic... Um, scaled back model. So, and I should also mention these are replacing what used to be a word processor, which is what we had before we actually all started using computers. So there is that. Um, there you go. I love my dog. Anyways, that is the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the descri or description. Leave them in the um, in the bottom, and I can answer those. 
as best as possible. Like I said, I will drop that code for 10% off if you want to order from Galen Leather and send you a link to Travelers um, to the free right website. I think it's getfreeright.com. That way you can check them out. Um, I do recommend checking out some other YouTube videos on the product as they probably have done a better job than I have. But anyways, hope you enjoyed and have a great day.